Howdy. It is the pirate and I. Hi. Hello. We finally, hello Siggy. Siggy's in the background meowing because she wants to go outdoors. She's not going outdoors. We have a three-legged cat that wants to go to the garden and all that stuff. It's crazy. Anyhow, we finally got our act together and we have, um, we have the backpack that we're giving away. You want to show them this goodie? And if you want I don't to, want to dump my coffee. Yeah, please don't dump your coffee in it. But this is this. Um, it's pretty nice. It's an anti-theft travel backpack. Uh, you can use it on the daily if you want your laptop in there or tablet or whatnot, and it charges from outside in. And there's some groovy stuff in there. Um, our son was modeling it in our one of our last videos. I think it was before our tile excursion. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, the tile excursion. I filled it with fluff so it would look fluffy. Mm -hmm. Another pocket there. Another pocket there. Little side dealy bob here, I guess for water bottles or snacks or whatever. And then the charger's on this side. Charger. Oh, there's a little charger port right here. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Meow! And Meow! Meow! Yes, very cool. And I like that it's all padded on the back here yeah. so that you don't, you know, want to. Right, wait. It is. It's a good looking backpack. I could steal it. No, our son already tried to steal it. No stealing. <laughs> no stealing. But we um, we looked at all of your questions. Um, everybody who asked a question, there's two videos uh, that we did. The one where my son was modeling and then one where um, three of us are in the driveway and uh, we are celebrating 100 subscribers, but I just looked and we're up to 146. I don't know how that happened, but thank you. Are you all so multiplying out there? They're multiplying. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good deal. Yay! Uh, so we have those that asked a question in this little tumbler. We only thought it was fitting. No, we're not paid by Carnival at all, but we have traveled with the uh, Carnival cruise lines and also, what is it, Princess? Princess. So And Princess. So those are the two that we've traveled. So we have a lot of these um, tumblers from We the get cruises. one every time. We do because there's different colors and shapes and sizes and we have to have it. Well, more so. And today my can, eyeshadow matches the You can buy a soda car tumbler. and you get the tumbler usually in the first day when you get on the boat. So you get the tumbler with the soda card mm -hmm. and then you get free refills the whole time. And it's not just soda, it's juices Jeez. and all kinds of things. Absolutely. So. And when you're traveling with kids, they're going to want the soda card because on the cruises, we'll just give you a little tip, on the cruises, they're going to charge you for the soda as they would like an alcoholic beverage. So it can get quite costly. So right. when you board the ship, you have the option to buy kind of like almost like a subscription, you know, for the duration well, of the cruise. And it's you an unlimited, unlimited soda fountain refill type thing. So you can go so to any of the good. bars or any of the restaurants and show them your soda card and I'll refill your cup with, with whatever beverage you're after. I don't know if I can edit that meow out. I don't think I can. No. Anyhow. Siggy. Stop it. Come here. Good gracious. Okay, so we have the people that have asked questions here in the little tumbler. Um, we wanted to um, probably do this at the last. We're going to answer the questions now uh, to the best of our ability and try to keep Siggy... Um, occupied so that she doesn't meow for you. So first question we have on the first video is, let's see, there's one um, by Morgan Ravenwood. Tell me no lies. My husband has never been to New Orleans and I would like to take him there on vacation. Um, it's been many moons since I visited uh, myself and since y'all were there, who better to ask? Uh, where would you recommend staying hotel-wise? And what time of year do you think is best to visit outside of Mardi Gras? Uh, outside of Mardi Gras. Um, and what attractions and sites do you feel uh, is a must-see for us witchy folk? So I'm thinking that she's like more goth and likes the other kind of like, hello, Siki. Are you on camera? You ready for your close-up? <laughs> um, so she's probably like ghost tours, I would imagine. I'd imagine the Hoodoo v Museum. There's Marie Laveau's um, grave site, which we just found out from our local friends 
that um, it had been vandalized, somebody decided to creep in there and paint the whole thing pink, and it embedded into the, into the, old the rock stone. and yeah. the stone. And so the pores just wouldn't release yeah, the they paint don't, very well. It took a lot of work. So they don't let people in there um, as much as they do before. Uh, we went to the Coven House, um, where American Horror Story was filmed, and that was uh, an original school that I can't remember. Um, its origination, but that's where they took it, right. um, or took the video, or filmed the show. Or right, filmed the show. Filmed the show. My hair's falling. My hair. There's a lot of energy just about everywhere you go mm -hmm. in New Orleans, so it's it's just neat to walk the streets and see the architecture and uh, some of the places. the The streets are so narrow. You know, that's really what the French Quarter is. When you go through the French Quarter, you can see how it was horse and buggy and, you know, very narrow streets and very narrow passageways. And the uh, when you get into some of the buildings, you can see some of the back little courtyards and all that stuff's really cool. So, that is cool. Um, it's, it's not about going to all the big fancy places. I think it's about seeing the small places, the holes in the walls. Go to some of the little eateries and mm -hmm. and uh, one-off places. They're they're really cozy and you know enchanting and have lots of old world charm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now she also asks like when is the best time of the year to go? I know for us we've been there when we were jumping on a cruise in the middle of summer and it was hotter than snot. It was so stifling hot. That's really going to depend on the individual. You know, if you're if you're that person that really likes to hot the, the heat and get out there and sweat and God bless you. God bless because you. We are that's not those that's people. Not us. But um, <laughs> you know, the heat also brings out some smells that you may not enjoy. So it's nice to also get up and get around early in the day after they've freshly you know. Uh, watered down the streets and and swept everything it's true. up. It's true. It's a thing. It they, they every morning they come out, or maybe it's in the middle of the night. I'm not sure. I think it's a little of both. Oh, okay. Right. And they they wash, they power wash the streets, and so there's mysterious liquid. <laughs> it might be coming from that trash dump. It's not some place I'd run around like barefoot downtown in the oh. in the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the French Quarter, probably not not what you want to do. <laughs> no, no, no. So. Um, I would prefer to probably go in the winter. Um, when we just went this last time, it was the beginning of April, and it actually was pretty nice. Um, it was raining. It was very nice. But there I was a cold it. front that came in, and I was excited because, I mean, I am lily white. I mean, I am Puerto Rican. 22% and I am apparently uh, related to Pitbull because um, this is as dark as I'm gonna get. <laughs> so um, I, I, don't, I don't like the sun, I don't like the heat and you don't either. So we like going to colder places which is why we're moving to Washington State. But exactly. um, yeah, so our favorite time of the year I think there is more, what do you say, early spring? Early spring is very nice there. You'll catch a few showers but it's very nice, it's pleasant. Very pleasant. I'm, I'm sure the fall, I've never been there in the fall. I haven't sure been fall either, but I'd nice enjoy too. it. Yeah. 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 And then also um, hotel recommendations. I know we've stay, stayed at a few different places while we've been there. We've stayed on, a, I think it was the Magnolia Inn or the Magnolia Hotel when it was Eric and Meredith's wedding. And that was a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. um, which I thought that it cost wise, but although that was what, 15 years ago? It was quite a while. It was a, it was it was a long a time ago. I think they're still there because when I was, um, I'm sorry, this hair is driving me crazy. I gotta fix it. Is that, is that better? It's fine. Okay, good. It was fine before. As long as you feel better. I feel better now. Good. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Then there's also the one that we stayed at across from the cruise terminal. Now we are Hyatt members. Uh, so we joined into the Hyatt group. Gosh. A long time ago. A long time ago. I think from one of our ago. anniversaries. I think so. Probably about 12 years ago. But we get points, so mm -hmm. we uh, we get free rooms in different Hyatt properties around the world, and we've used them all over the place. We so. buy things on that credit card, we get points, we redeem them, and then you get like a free two rooms. We get one free room on our anniversary sometime in March okay. or shortly thereafter, and then we get so many points per year that we get to utilize. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and we gain the extra points if we stay at Hyatt property. So mm -hmm. we usually get a better deal and we get free room, so we utilize it. Yeah, and in this last time we got to stay at the Hyatt Centric, which is actually in the French Quarter. Mm -hmm. It was a very swanky hotel. Very nice. And we only paid like, what, 100 bucks for three nights? Right, I think that's what Something it was. like that. And With using our points. Using our points. So, um, I mean, I'm sure there's pros and cons. Not everybody is fit for a credit card. They want to, you know, invest that kind of right. activity with. They but, have lots you know. of B&Bs. Mm -hmm. um, I've always liked the B&B situation. Now that they've got Airbnbs, we've tried those a couple of times. Um, uh, not near as much as we probably will in the future. But uh, I know the locals in uh, New Orleans have a little bit against the Airbnb because uh, it takes takes from the local economy they feel because they're not uh, under the same tax bracket as a hotel paying, paying to uh, reduce streets and although I haven't seen much redone in the streets there um, but they it, they tend to say it takes away from their local uh, working class accommodations because people close down small places that have apartments turn them into Airbnbs and then the local workers don't have a place in the city to really li live affordably because uh, it's all turned into Airbnb. So a lot of the locals have some some issues with the, the downtown Airbnbs. Now you get out in the, the outskirts of, uh, you know, away from the French Quarter where all the major heavy uh, foot traffic is, then the Airbnbs aren't nearly as much of an issue for the locals. Not that it's gonna cause you any issues, but you know, if you're trying to support the locals, the um, the Airbnbs aren't really uh, liked as much by them. There are some that are owned by them, um, right. but I don't know how you find that out. Right. So I mean, you kind yeah, of that's part of the issue. Is you know somebody from Vancouver comes down and buys an apartment building and converts it all into Airbnb. They don't even live there. They don't put any of their money back into the town, and uh, the locals don't have a place to live affordably anymore because it's all yeah. turned to Airbnb. I know that was that was some of our friends' uh, local um, issues with the downtown uh, Airbnb stuff. Points, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Generally, if we have points, we try to use them. And if it's just the two of us, we usually go for the higher hotel, you know, or higher grade or top of the heap kind of thing. Right. Um, top of the ladder. We because we can get a better deal because we're only needing one room or one bed right. now when we're traveling with family we've done it where we have like a suite um but we'll go to like the hyatt place or you know more of the business type thing um business travel type hotel um in the hyatt um what do you call it in the hyatt family and that way it accommodates um you know like three queen beds and a pull out and you know all kinds of stuff all five you know? of us can fit there easily mm -hmm. and comfortably and and uh doesn't cost us really any more points it, basically it's the same points we mm -hmm. can accommodate everybody and it makes it easy on us yeah when you're traveling with little kids it's easier i mean bigger kids obviously i mean at one point like we couldn't have a car anymore because if they, if our kids wanted to bring a friend um you know, these are the size of adults, these kids. I mean, kids. Right. I mean, it, they're, so adults. they're adults. So now they're all adults and we all need our own space. So I don't know how the next travel experience is going to be. Probably going to need two rooms <laughs> is right. how it's going to go. Okay, on to the next question. Um, where is, this is by, from Lily Rose Mystic. Where is, where is at the top of your dream travel destination for each of you and why do you have, uh, and why and do you have any good tips on saving money to travel and any good advice you've picked up along the way boy you packed them all in didn't you uh, about three questions there's about we you have know, 12 questions four. in this one all right um let's say good advice uh, you picked up along the way that would be helpful to people who haven't really traveled anywhere yet so i can i can say i'll for each of us uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of the kids. They're busy doing stuff today, so I couldn't. I couldn't drag him here. I know that Casper wants to go on the Alaskan cruise, big time. I would say the number one on saving money and travel is absolutely cruising. 
Cruising is by far the least expensive way to travel. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to have a balcony room. You don't have to be at the top of the ship. In fact, the most comfortable place, if you're worried at all about seasickness, is between the elevators in the middle of the ship um, without a window to the sea. Because if you're in that center corridor, you're gonna, your, your balance is gonna be much more equal well, and uh, you, you're gonna have less motion, you're gonna have less movement. You'll have just the most minor at all, even in the more major stuff. So typically on a larger ship, you'll have, or most ships, you have three elevators. You have, you have the forward and you have the rear elevators and then you usually have at least one set of center, sometimes you have two. But anywhere between, you don't wanna be in front of any of the elevators or behind any elevators. Behind the elevators, you're gonna get all the motor noise and extra vibration, which I've actually enjoyed the motor vibration a little bit. It rocks me to sleep just because it's a, she didn't like it. But uh, I have tinnitus and to me it kind of nulls out and I don't even notice it. To me, I'm just going with this. <laughs> I do that anyway. <laughs> so anyway, anywhere between the the forward and aft uh, elevators and in that center corridor, you're going to have the most comfortable ride, especially if you're uh, right at the center. right at yeah, as close to the middle as you can. A lot of times there's not rooms right in the middle unless you get just below your main deck around water level thereabouts. And yeah, you don't perfect. want to be at the top of the ship because then you're feeling this. Then you this. get sway this way. So, um, right at water level, give or take a um, couple levels, is fantastic. It really is. Mm -hmm. So, I, I highly recommend cruising for bang for your buck. Um, if you can afford to go when school is in session, you're going to have the cheapest fares you can get. Yeah, high season, it, it's going to cost you high money. Right. If you're close to Florida, Florida has some of the cheapest uh, cruises going out because they have so many. You know, <laughs> one side of Florida or the other has mm -hmm. cruise terminals just all the way, riddled all the way down Florida. So it is very inexpensive to cruise out of Florida. We have not actually cruised out of Florida. We've cruised out of New Orleans. We've cruised out of Galveston. Galveston's usually got very fair rates. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a little limited. It does. I mean, it's not. It doesn't the go busiest, as many destinations. Busiest port, but I mean, it, it will go to some places. I oh, mean, absolutely. Um, Eastern Caribbean, uh, Belize, and Honduras, and uh, Jamaica, and Grand Cayman, and and Co and. Co well, there's both the, both the Eastern Caribbean cruises and the Western Caribbean cruises. It'll do. It used to do some cruises to nowhere. Last time I looked, it wasn't doing any. Oh really. Yeah, it wasn't doing it. I think that might be more of a winter thing, so they may just not be doing it currently. Oh, well, that's cool. So, um, you'll also notice seasons change where they cruise to. Mm -hmm. And you can also sometimes catch when a boat is moving from one port to another. Mm -hmm. And you can get a really good deal going somewhere. Like, mm -hmm. you can cruise out of Galveston all the way to Europe when a ship's moving. All the way to Spain. All, all the way to Spain. All the way to Spain. Spain is the start of that next whole group. And so they will transfer like some of the big boats around. So say um, the Magic and then some of the big ones. The, I, the big one is the Carnival Magic and probably the Conquest. So they may take the Conquest and that's going to Florida. So you can hitch a ride over there. And then the Magic is moving over, you know, what was in Florida and then moving over to go do two or three months over in uh, Europe. So it starts in Spain and there right. you go. So we have met people um, on, this is the princess, by the way, this is the royal princess that I'm holding up. We try to get one of these for every cruise that we're on. I think we're missing just one because right. it was a little like three day cruise that we did out of um, right. they didn't LA, have they didn't have any. But um, we have met lots of uh, travelers, uh, retirees that will actually take a cruise, you know, from Florida over to Spain, um, or wait, did they go to, um, Southampton. I think that's where they went. They went to Southampton. They were the cruise all the way to that's Southampton, in England. England. And then, then they jumped another boat, which was this one. And then they did the British Isle cruise. And then they went back, you know, um, I think they stayed a day or something like that. And then they went back from uh, Southampton back to Florida or New York. 
I think it was maybe it was New York. It was I'm New York. Sure. They went back to New but York. But it, it actually costs them less to do that if you have the time. It cost them less to do that other um, than the airfare. Than was. the airfare, and it was an easier and more enjoyable ride. So oh yeah, they it, had a blast. And yeah. The, the 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 reason why I recommend ship travel is you get to the port, you unload your bags, you you go through the process of getting checked in and going through their security and all that stuff. Do Which the is paper. not not a big it's deal. not that big mm -hmm. of a deal. Um, but once you're on that boat, you're on vacation. You have your room accommodations for the next, whether it's three days, five days, eight days, you name however long your cruise is. You, got, you, you don't cut. have to change hotel rooms. You don't have to worry about where you're eating. You got to, yeah, you have to set up a schedule so you're either eating in the dining room or you're going to go to the buffet. Or you're we like one, the dining room. We like the formal dining room. Or you, you know, you can go to one of their many, uh, not many, but uh, depends on the cruise ship. You can go to one of their. Uh, signature restaurants whether it's Italian or steakhouse or what have you they uh, typically have two or three and some ships have five mm -hmm. specialty restaurants and you can go to those make a reservation and go to those and, and the food is always fantastic Absolutely the signature delicious. restaurants I will say is an extra fee but it's almost always worth it if you want one uh, now and, and I think that the, the point that you're getting at is all you, you're paying for your accommodation. So your 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 cabin is included in the price. Right. The taxes and fees are already included, and the gratuity right. is generally included in you the pay price. For that up front. You pay for it up front. Um, you can choose to give additional gratuity, which I suggest because uh, these people are really making a living at hustling for you the entire week. So you want to give extra and if you tip at the them end. Up front, uh, I'd tip them up front. Mm -hmm. I'd, give, I'd give them a nominal tip up front and then give them additional in the rear if you choose to. But mm -hmm. up front, they're going to know that you appreciate what they're doing for you and they're going to work twice as hard. They always do. They always we've, do. we've always had good luck with our servants, not servants, excuse me, our service uh, aboard cruise ships. It's been really, really top We've notch. kept in touch with uh, quite a few of them. We always exchange information right. at the end of the cruise, and you meet some pretty awesome people. Right. Pretty From awesome people the behind, the, behind the scenes. All over the world. Yeah, really awesome. Very few Americans actually on the ship. Most of them are on the entertainment mm -hmm. side. Yeah. But... Uh, in all the other areas, you'll you'll meet some really fantastic people from around the world. You will. You Most will. of them speak multiple languages, and uh, it's <laughs> it's entertaining and it's a, a wealth of cultural knowledge that you get to gain. It is. That's true. Also, all of your food is included. All of your food, except for the specialty restaurants. Right. Um, alcohol is not included. So some I mean, ships do have packages, though. They do, and you would try to pay for that, you know, like a week or two before the cruise, and you just take care of it. You get a, like a little sticker on your card and all that other stuff, and it, it's a good thing. So for us, with a family of five, we found that it was actually less expensive to travel via cruise because when you only have a week to travel, and imagine you're packing, like, like you know, the last generation would pack you all into a... Um, station wagon and drive for three days and then be somewhere for like another two days and then drive again you know there is your week in trying to travel you're arguing about where to go which turn to make where we got to stop for gas who's got to pee it's a pain in the butt so when you are able to cruise even if it's a short one the second you're on that boat you're already having fun somebody else is driving Yep. Somebody is taking care of the, the stuff. You know that you can go and get, find food anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then there's so many activities which are also included. The entertainment and the big shows. and like I mean, they are like Vegas-style shows. Absolutely. And you're going to really, really love them. Um, and then there's like these kids' clubs, which are also um, – free of charge yeah. and so they do that I think according to age I think is what Casper was saying Different not necessarily categories. yeah so you have for the little youngins and then you have the middles you know and then you have like pre teens, pre -teens, pre -teens yeah. and then the big teens yeah my kids from when was our la uh, very first cruise it had to have been what 10 years ago maybe even more it's been, a while. it's been a while. They still have friends on Facebook and Instagram and email that they keep up with from that very first cruise. Right. From Canada, from England. From England. Um, gosh, there's just all Around, over. All over all the over U.S. The, yeah, yeah, all over. Um, they made lifelong friends. And right. if they ever choose to travel to those places, they know somebody 
there. So that's also the wonderful thing about travel is meeting and connecting with people all around the globe. So, I mean, this you can't do that. If you had to itemize what all of that would cost, it would be astronomical. So Absolutely. we love to cruise. We really do love to cruise, but we love to travel in any way. Another thing um, you really? asked on ways to save money um, tips. Um, if you are a college student and have a college ID, if you're military or ex-military, it never hurts anytime you go into a museum, if you're going to a, a attraction, uh, you know, like a Ferris wheel, whatever. The crumbly, the, the crumbly, crumbly discount. The crumbly discount. Um, <laughs> I'm a disabled vet, and in Britain, their their term for that is crumbly. You got the crumbly discount. I'm like, so, what? So, You're so crumbly. I'm crumbly. You'll crumble. So, it never hurts to ask about your military or student ID discount, because they have those all throughout Europe. And my U.S. Army still got me the crumbly discount in England. So, uh, never hurts to ask. Sometimes they don't discount. Sometimes what it is is like with the crumbly discount, often often um, what it was is I'd pay for mine and then I would have a caretaker who uh, got in for free. So um, that's that was a discount, buy one, get one free. That's excellent. You know, yeah, it's excellent. So, I mean, we got into castles that way. Absolutely. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it's good. So, Okay, we have to hurry up. We're taking too, right. too much time on these. All right, um, from Elaine Perez. Girl, we are probably related. That's all I have to say with that right now. Okay, um, as a mom, do you schedule uh, your time uh, your time for events and sightseeing with handicapped husband and children? Um, do you pre-plan or is it fly by the seat of your pants kind of thing? Uh, let me just tell you, I am not a fly by the seat of your pants kind of gal. I just don't. <laughs> I like to plan. And also there are discounts in doing so. Hey, there are discounts in doing so. And you want to do, stop. Okay, I can see you in things. See right there? Yeah, I'm looking at you. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so. There's not much of the seat of my pants left. No. <laughs> I've chewed it off. Anyhow. So trying to herd cats which is what it feels like when you're a mom and you have all these people on the trip uh, I again I love cruising and I love cruising because everybody can just plug themselves into what they want to do and you meet back up and everybody's contained and happy right. and that is so key because there's nothing worse as a mom trying to make sure he's happy trying to make sure they're happy did they eat where are they at all of it it's a pain so trying to keep everybody happy um, is, and typically is every rough. port you every day you wake up in a new port Mm -hmm. Which is nice. Which is nice. And usually that's the time that they're with us. <laughs> when they're not on the ship. Right. When they're on the ship, they're running around and having a great time. Like a mm -hmm. great time. And there's actually security in those programs. So it will tell you where they are on the ship. And you will get notified if they're in places they're not supposed to be. Which is pretty awesome. So as a parent, you're probably going to want to use that little tool. And I think you pay a little extra for it. But it's peace of mind. It's good. Right. Um, so the excursions and things that we do, which are the, um, you know, the events or the little activities. Whatever, whatever it is we do in each port, we do have to look at those fairly closely to see, first of all, is it something the family wants to do? Second of all, is it something I'm even capable of doing with one leg? Mm -hmm. um, to tell you the truth, even though I may regret it the next day, sometimes I do things that even the kids aren't really prepared to go do. <laughs> So even this one doesn't really like to do some of the things I do yep. um, energy level wise or uh, any of that. So, you know, we went to, to England or Ireland and I climbed the steps of Barney Castle. It was a personal challenge for me, yeah. um, made it all the way up. I was down on, you know, all fours at one point, turning sideways to get through the door at the very top of the, the castle because it's so narrow and I'm so big. But uh, I made it, and it, you know, I can always say, you know, I did that. That and was something that you really wanted to do. That was something right? I've For always me, wanted to do long before I lost my leg and thought that I'd never do it. 
Um, to tell you the truth, once you're about halfway up, there wasn't any really turning around and going back down, you know, so, you know, I was stuck I, in that route and I was going. <laughs> I, I saw the line and I'm like, oh, no, no, walk around the gardens, it's like, it's beautiful. No, <laughs> no, look at me, I'm gonna, I'm good, <laughs> I'm good. So, yes, yeah. we have to consider the handicap stuff. I do have a water leg, so, you know, around the cruise, there's always a lot of water activities. Um, there have been times when my leg came off and I had to dive down 30 yeah. feet in a spiral because I'm only paddling with one leg to pick up the leg. But um, the walking is the biggest issue and uh, sometimes your boats um, don't go all the way into a, an actual dock. Mm -hmm. You have to take a tender in and therefore I can't take a wheelchair. Um, a tender is a smaller boat that um, goes up to the ship and you board that and then it brings you into the dock. And it's easy, it's the comfortable, but there's stairs. Like a half a mile or a mile long sometimes right. to you know get it because you have to accommodate a great big cruise trip. Right, so. it's not a little dinghy. It's not something you have to worry about capsizing on your way into, into shore. It holds hundreds of people at a time typically. It's just next to that cruise ship, it's much smaller and right. it can get up to the smaller docks. Cool. So, um, but on those, I have to be aware of how much walking I'm gonna do, what type of terrain, you know, and all that stuff. I don't really handle the heat, so if some of these destinations get get really hot, then no. you know, the activity level goes way down. What we typically do is we look at the excursions that are offered through the cruise um, um, site. So, uh, say for Carnival, we'll say, uh, they have all these excursions that are listed for you, and you can go in and see what um, the activity level is, what the age level is, the price range, um, all that other stuff. I print out the ones that I think are, you know, like I get do the snipping tool and put it in a Word doc. So I snip it and then put it in a Word doc and then all the ones that we're interested in, and then I come call a family meeting and I'm like, okay, and we sit, okay, sit there and we vote on it. Um, and that's how we go about it. And then you want to book it before you get on the cruise ship because the line, once you're on the cruise ship, to start booking some of these excursions, they're going to sell out really quick and then... Of course, there's five of yeah. us typically. And, so it's yeah. going to be hard to find something altogether. So that's, that's what we generally do. And if we are not on a cruise ship, then we do something very similar. Like at Grand Cayman, we have friends that are actually running the excursion, so they kind of help us around with that and get us deals and we go in and do that. Right. But um, let's see, uh, like when we were in Washington and Canada, um, I think we just sort of looked around and decided as a family what we wanted to do first and then pre-booked. Yeah, we kind of winged that one a bit. We did, we did. It was um, still enjoyable. I know Rachel liked that one best yeah. because we did wing it. Yeah. She didn't feel the pressure. She didn't feel the pressure. So for me, the pressure is taken off when I know what's coming or what to expect because our youngest is always like, what are we doing today? What are we doing now? What are we doing now? Well, what are we doing tomorrow? And I'm like, oh my girl, <laughs> girl, I'm her cruise director, literally. Right. Yep. So um, I try busy. to, yeah, I keep that kid busy. So that's what we do there. I'm trying to think, let's see. <laughs> um, we have from Carol Frierson, how do you pick or choose your next trip? Uh, sometimes opportunities are presented to us. So like His Grand best friend from right. high school had some, um, um, I think it was points or... A, a, he had some free weeks. He had some free weeks oh, in yes. his timeshare. Yeah. So we were asked to go, we were invited to go, which was really, really it was awesome. Fantastic. It was a fantastic time. It was a really good time. And we got to take more of a leisurely route. Um, we I really at, appreciate them sharing that. That was a fantastic it was time really together. Cool. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. The island will provide. Oh, the island the, with the leaf. Yeah. It will provide. Um, so there's that. Um, I think proximity also helps. Like uh, since we're moving up to the Pacific Northwest, over in Bellingham, uh, Vancouver, and Seattle, there are cruises that go up to Alaska and to Hawaii. So th we've been cruising a lot through Galveston and um, New Orleans just because of proximity and that's, you know, they only go to certain places. Obviously, you're not gonna board a ship in Galveston, to, it's gonna take you to Alaska or Hawaii, it's not gonna happen that way. Those only come out of, I think, LA and Seattle, those two, to go to Hawaii. So that's probably sure gonna be- I'm not sure I'm on the world cruises, it's no. like three or four months long. 
Yeah. That'd be fantastic. That would be we fantastic. Yeah. Let's just somebody, win the somebody want somebody want to buy us a world cruise. World we, cruise. We'll go, we'll go on it. There is a cruise you. ship called the World, <laughs> and you actually have an apartment, and right. you can take your animals on there. I mean, within reason, I think. And then you actually cruise for an entire year all around the two world. Two llamas, two camels. Two, two llamas. Yeah. Two, two, two. You know, yeah. Ozark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I think that has to do with it. Um, I don't think we're going to get through all these questions. I think we're going to have to do another Q and A at another time. Um, yeah, because we're already thirty-four minutes in. Okay, what's your question? Okay, um, <laughs> have you ever sat next to someone who? This is from Pepper Jackie. Have you ever sat next to someone who just made you vile with disgust? <laughs> For example, sitting next to someone with poor hygiene, bad breath, bad table manners, etc. Well, there was a time at the movie theater I had to get up and leave. <laughs> it was go. awful. That was pretty bad. It was really, that was really bad. bad. Um, I generally, Bear is a germaphobe. So, and he just was an OR tech and just can't handle some of the, just he can't, he can't do it. Did you wash your hands? Did you wash your hands? Like, <laughs> did you wash your hands? You know, whatever. So, I will usually take the hit for the team and will be in the middle seat. Uh, if there is suspect of somebody sharing, you know, the aisle with us, and I will take one for the team. And I think there was one time, I think we had to separate, and I can't remember oh, yeah, why this blank. was, and I got the smelly guy. I mean, I, he is a close talker and a smelly guy. And then I was just like, please. Meanwhile, I'm looking back and Bear's having the time of his life, you know, talking to somebody. I don't know who you're talking to. Always having talking the, to somebody. Having the time of their lives. And it just reminded me of that Seinfeld episode where Jerry is in first class having the time of his life and Elaine is back there like, <sighs> But if you notice, the next time we flew, the next time we flew, you got to fly first class. I know, that was I upgraded awesome. you just be because of that. That yes, was a big it's true. And that. nobody sat next to me. No. Nobody sat next I to me. But no. In you first were over class. there with Amber. First, oh, that's right. Nobody you sat were, next to me. I laid out. Oh, yeah. Oh, you oh, lounge cat. That was awesome. That we was awesome. did have somebody with really bad, not really the manners side as far as the way they ate, but they were so rude to the staff that oh, it, it really bothered us. That was the second cruise? Second cruise. Second cruise. Second yeah. cruise. First um, cruise with the kids. Oh, gosh. And the kids couldn't stand them either. Right. And they were just horrible. They were like, we need more milk. And this is not the milk I asked for. Like, they were just rude. They complained about everything. Um, and the um, the wait staff were bending over backwards to make them happy. And it just, it was really it was like, the mom and the son. It was, there was nothing. Awful. There was nothing to make them happy. They were yeah, miserable kind of meek people. And just tolerated it all. They were miserable people. So that, that did not make, that was I think the one time I didn't enjoy going to the dining room. Right. Yeah, that was the one time. Okay, so that's all the questions for this video. Um, I have another one, hold on one second, let me go back. So there, Casper is modeling the backpack, okay. Oh no. Pause. Why are you not pausing? Pause. Okay. Um, you're not supposed to be texting in the middle of this. What are you doing? Somebody coming to see the house? That's what I was checking. Oh. We're, trying We're to selling sell this our house. house. Yep. <laughs> trying, to sell this. trying to sell the house, so I got to keep an eye on if we've got uh, somebody coming to look at the house, and we got to vacate within the hour. Yeah, we have oh. like an hour's notice to do it. Uh oh. Holy crap. Whoa. This is what happens? No, the same him. So. No? Good. Okay. Well, we are. Do, do, do. Okay. Well, I'm on the second video here, and we have something. Um, Sunshine uh, asks When planning a trip, do you use agencies to help or plan the whole thing yourself? Nice travel backpack, by the way. You're welcome. Um, Nice travel backpack. Somebody's gonna win it. Um, when planning a trip, do we use agents? Yes and no, I'm gonna say. We are members of AAA, or have been. I don't know if we are currently. Are we currently AAA yes. members? Okay, so you can get a discount and they will help you with the travel, but they don't really help you with the cruising. 
So what we have found works obviously because AAA we, does cruising. Does it? We bought one of the cruises through AAA one year. Did we? Okay. Yep. Um, we also are USAA members. USAA, what people don't know is USAA has a travel industry or a travel agency attached to USAA. So you can actually lay away your cruise in some ways. Yep. You have to put down a percentage and then you have to just have it paid off by I think like a month or two before, it, before details, you actually yeah, cruise. I think it's 30 days prior. Yeah, it's that's a great way to travel if you can. Um, they also have a thing or have several years in a row, we've bought a couple of them this way, where you can get, you buy a cruise, mm -hmm. you know, for however many people, but you also, um, get a free week to stay somewhere else, and we've mm -hmm. done that twice. So I think we did it once. Huh? That's when we did it. So we went on the cruise. We did that, and then we took. The oh, kids we turned to the other week into a three-day cruise. We did a, did that. No, was it three-day? We did, we've done it twice. I think we did the seven-day because it was the last one. And that's when we went on the magic. And then we turned it around for the next or well, in, we also did in it in England. November. I bought a deal with them when we went to then England. Then that's the cruise. Then so that's we went the cruise. the cruise and did another one in Florida, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Florida and we took all the right. kids and I believe we took them too late. <laughs> yeah, they were they too were old. Because they were grouchy teenagers. Yeah. It kind of sucked. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, we went to Florida and we had a timeshare there and that was that was pretty awesome. Was we nice. had really nice um, accommodations. I don't really care for, and I know that you're getting something for free, but I really don't like wasting my time. And for me, it's like if I've already made the deal, leave me alone. I don't need a salesperson to sit here and pitch me and make me feel bad for not, you know. I mean, that guy was like nice at first and then he turned into just like whatever. Right. Like he was just like, Shh, get out of my face kind of thing. And I'm just like, wow, I hate going to these things, these timeshare things. And he'll get you know all these little free dinner, free cruise, free this, free that. Generally... In order to get that free thing, you have to jump through so many damn hoops that you're not going to get anything for free. And the time frame for you to actually go is like within two weeks of this and that. And if the stars align, it is a waste of your time. I hate it. Do you know how much I hate it? She hates it. I hate it. I don't mind it. I hate doing those things. I don't mind it. I hate it. <laughs> hate it. So, anyhow. Yes, we use agencies and sometimes we... Just do it ourselves. All right. Um, where butterfly kisses? These names, I love them. These, these, I love them. Okay. Um, where's your favorite travel spot? I like Grand Cayman, and I like Europe. Yeah, well, Europe's very big. So, uh, I mean, favorite travel spot? I haven't got to go to Germany with you, but Germany's my favorite. Place I would like to, to go travel. to Germany with you. So, I'm, I'm down. I mean, I'm down. But, we really um, enjoyed our trip to England. Yeah. We really enjoyed um, England. There is a little spot But it's that hard to is... divide England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland. That whole trip was just... There's favorite spots at each of those places. Yeah. So if you're going to say Scotland, I'm going to say Queensbury. If you're going to say England, I'm going to say Abington because that was my ancestry village and it was amazing mm -hmm. to be there. But I'm connecting with it on another level. If I'm going to say Ireland, I'm going to say Cove. Um, you know, or Cork, mm -hmm. because that led us to Blarney Castle, and that was probably my favorite <coughs> area of Ireland. If we're going to say France, I'm going to say Rhun, because I really enjoyed the city and the um, and the country aspect of it. But that's all that I went to. So, <laughs> so I'm sure that there's more stuff, you know, to see out there. Um, Caribbean, I'm going to say Grand Canaan. Um, on all the cruises, the best destination on any of the stops is by far Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman. It's safe. It's friendly. It's not it's overwhelming. It's easy to get around. Ruled by the UK. So, right. I mean, it is it is safe. It is very safe. I've actually stayed there on the island it's three clean. weeks. I think I've been there three yeah. different weeks at three different times, uh, different parts of the times of the year. I really love Grand Cayman. Grand if I could go live there for six months or a year, I would. Um, Not it, during hurricane season. No, no, no. No way. Okay. So I'm that's scared. that. I'm a little chicken. <laughs> I'm a little chicken. 
Okay, uh, Debbie Dunway, nice backpack. What is your favorite town so far on the trip, on the trip to buying your new home? Oh, on the trip. What? To where do they? Home? Where are we looking at? We like a little place called Coopville on uh, um, Whitby Island. Whitby Island. We yeah. really like that place. We like uh, Whitby Island Island in general. Oak, we Oak also Harbor. liked Port Townsend a whole lot. Yeah. We liked. But I think our favorite is probably uh, the Bellingham area. We love the Bellingham area. I like That's what downtown started Ma us on that. Mount Vernon. I like downtown Mount Vernon a lot. Yeah. Um, Laconer. Yeah, there is Laconer's no favorite. Beautiful. There is no favorite. We I'd just say like Whitby places. Island mm -hmm. and pretty much anything north of uh, Seattle by half an hour or more mm -hmm. on the sound side mm -hmm. of Washington is where we want to be, right there along, either in the uh, sound in the islands or along the coast there. We, we really like that area. We do, it's true. On to the next question, love it. Where is your next destination besides moving? Probably an Alaskan cruise. You, are you really, you're committing to that? Because you just got the notification that now um, out of Galveston, you get to go to Cuba. So we're like, oh. Well, that'd be Ooh. the next one we come back here for. But I don't know if we'll be doing that before we go back up there. Mm. So, probably Alaska. Probably Alaska is the next one. But I am excited about going to Cuba on a cruise ship out of Galveston. Do that you say Cuba or do you say Cuba? If I'm here, I say Cuba. If I'm there, I'm say Cuba. Cuba. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your family's favorite trip? Ah, all in all. I know, I know Rachel's was our trip to Washington, staying yeah. on, on Toad Lake, that was Emerald nice. Lake, em Emerald Lake. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, Casper, I think, I don't know. I think he, I liked think he the likes Cayman. Cayman. He likes Cayman. I think he Amber likes, likes rum. Cayman That's too. the problem is he went to the rum factory with us and uh, he, uh, he really enjoyed that. 14, well, yeah. I'm telling you, he was tall for his age and they just kept giving him, him rum cake and my son couldn't get on the bus. The cake is drenched in rum. So he had a few too many samples. I tell you it was delicious, but <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this kid. He is a pirate son. That's <laughs> pirate for sure. son for sure. So um, I think Amber would also say Cayman. I think she would. She liked the fun in the sun and she did a lot in that, you know, got a lot of deck time, pool time mm -hmm. with the sun and all that. So her, yeah. her freckles really came out. They came they out the sparkle. My favorite trip was um, the British Isles That's cruise, um, but I'll tell you that I wish, I think we're probably going to take that trip again if we get the opportunity because there's so much to do at each port. Um, I wish they would add an extra two days just at sea so that you have an option to rest because I think it's a 14 day cruise and 12 of 12 those of days, you're in, port. you're in port, which means you are doing excursions in the morning and in the evening, and you're like trying to soak in as much you can from you each can, port, and it is, I am exhausted. You can <laughs> choose not to do something on a day, but you're missing out on that port. Yeah. So if that's the time that you're in Wales, then you missed Wales. You missed Wales, because you're so, tired, it happens. So. So I would like to take that again, but I mean, I think I'm ready for it this time. Shoot. Um, I would like to go there. I'd also like to go to Norway, I, you know, and the, I definitely uh, Iceland. Do that. Really would love to go to Iceland. I would love to go to Greece. Right. Um, I don't know if it's safe right now. I don't exactly know what the politics are there, but I really would like to see Santorini before I die. Right. For sure. Okay. Uh, fly by night. Having a disability myself, I would like to know what ha what has been the easiest and hardest places to visit. And before your trips, do you uh, try to make sure you have easier access to places, or just go with the flow? So that's for you. Well, for the most part, I try to accommodate the family. Now that it's Yvonne and I, um, I, I can accommodate myself as well as her a little bit more. Before I was trying to make sure we were doing things kids wanted to do as well. Um, I, I'm more of a go with the flow kind of guy typically and look at it, if I can do it, I can do it. If I can't, I can't. Um, I also push myself to the 
edged far more than I should with this one leg and history of four broken bones in my back and I find all my it other. Interesting that you admit it to them, but you would never say that to my face. No, no, you're like, no, I'm good. Right. Woman, stop bothering me. Well, I'm going to take care of it. We spent but the money. We're going to enjoy he'll it. He'll be down for three days afterwards, Absolutely. and then I'm going to pay for it. So I that's why I'm like. Paying for it. But anyway. I'm still paying for it. <laughs> so I, I do a lot of the go with the flow, but I push myself a lot further than I should. Um, some of the places, especially Europe, they're not real accommodating as no. far as handicap accessibility. Um, if you're in a wheelchair, it gets a, it's very difficult to get around a lot of these places. Um, mm -hmm. You're definitely going to have a better time when you can, if you're on a cruise where you can dock at a, an actual port and not take a tender. Mm -hmm. um, those days you may just want to stay on the, uh, on the vessel. Well, There's still the nice one, cool down there. Remember days. the one gal that had the, um, the um, service dog with her? Yes. The, the black lab? Yes. And we saw her several places um, around, I think it was Ireland at um, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Right. We saw her there and they had great accommodations for handicapped because they right. had this big like I, she did make the arrangements. Lift. Yeah. They did make arrangements. Sometimes it's difficult to get the lift vans to transport you. I know in Cozumel they had vehicles, the taxis. They did have Jamaica, some. And Jamaica and, did, but you just really it's. So it's, 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 Jamaica is a little shady. bit more hit and miss on mm -hmm. the, on those accommodations. I don't know how guaranteed that is, but if you can make accommodations through the cruise ship, it's typically going to happen. I I don't know of any real issues with it not happening once you've made arrangements through the cruise ship. They pretty much guarantee everything to happen the way they say it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You'll pay a little bit more for that, but it's And well if something worth it. goes wrong, it's backed up. So right. the cruise boat won't leave without you if you right. can't make it back to the ship. They'll wait. Now, when you fly into Europe, um, depending on your level of disability, if you're confined to a wheelchair, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, if you're trying to get around the downtown streets, the, the sidewalks are, are good enough, but when you're crossing streets and stuff like that, they don't always have... I'll say the same thing for New Orleans. Absolutely. Because I couldn't no, imagine. No, New Orleans is rough it. getting getting around. That cobblestone ain't no joke. The cobblestone's rough on a bicycle, much less a wheelchair. So, um, depends on what you're interested in and... and what what your level of disability really is you just may want to take things at a shorter uh pace mm -hmm. so instead of going out for four hours at a time you may go out for an hour at a time or an hour and a half or two hours and uh, use your car more parking can be an issue in, in a lot of these places mm -hmm. so you're going to really want to map out your parking the wonderful thing about modern day is we have gps on our phones and you put put up parking on on your gps and it'll tell you where the closest parking is um, but those things are things we have to look at now. Okay. Where from Mrs. Lady Butterfly, uh, where was the best food you had on your travels or where or on the cruise ship itself? The best, well, no, no, sir. Oh, New Orleans. Guernsey. Oh, the island good. of Guernsey. I don't know what I got. It was something with, but there's oh, Guernsey the cheese. Oh, the pub. pub food. Pub food. Pub food. food. Mm -hmm. All pub food is good. <laughs> it's not healthy, but it's good. I'm going to say that. Oh, and also the Thai place, um, almost to Canada. Oh, that was good food, too. That is good food. Right I'm on excited the coast. about, yeah, you yeah. know, going and living over there because I can't wait to go find this Thai food again. It was delicious. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The New Orleans, the restaurant we ate in last uh, in New Orleans yeah. was fantastic. I think you'd have to go on and see the video because I have the, a, like a video footage of mm -hmm. the um, that was menu. Good stuff. That was amazing. That was really good stuff. Gosh. But typically the, all the food on the cruise ships really good. Mm -hmm. But I would really recommend eating in the formal dining room versus the buffets. I'm not a buffet person. You but don't get the same level of, I mean, there's some delightful things on the buffet, mm -hmm. but I mean, uh, we're not buffeters because we just, there's a lot of people that you know I don't know that dig in your hand. Yeah, I just we don't we don't buffet a whole lot. So we really like the dining room because 
the um, the wait staff actually get to know your order the very first night. So if he needs, you know, iced tea, they're gonna break their necks to have iced tea for him already ready the second night because they already know his order. They're gonna they know, know that I'm gonna want like. a cappuccino. They're gonna know that, you know, right. I'm gonna need what milk What type of sodas you drink, your kids drink and all that stuff. And yeah. they already know you have a card, so they're already gonna have it on the table. You're not waiting extra time for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they're, it's a really awesome They experience. bring around different types of dinner rolls, and I always like the ones with the nuts and the seeds on them, and, or the little croissants, or There's what have you. The cranberries and, and Oh, the butter. Oh, <laughs> let's talk about but the anyway, butter. But <laughs> anyway, they'll have those particular ones you like there already for you, waiting on you before you get there. So it's, all, it's always nice at the table that way. Oh, I got to sneeze. Bless you. Kazuna. <laughs> Moving on. How many piratey places have you traveled to? Have you searched for any buried treasure on your travels, pirate? Um, let's see. Piratey places. That's a good question. It is a good question. Obviously, Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman. Jamaica. Jamaica. Cozumel. Cozumel. There were pirates there. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't know about pirates in New well, Orleans. Or Galveston, I'm not. I'm Fair sure Haven. that there were. Fairhaven was founded by Dirty Dan, the pirate. Fairhaven, Fairhaven, yes. And it's up there next to the part of the Bellingham mm -hmm. area. Their um, city mascot or city hero is a pirate called Dirty Dan. Yeah, he supposedly founded the the town way back when. And there's actually a restaurant in Bellingham. I can't remember. I think it might be Dirty Dan's. Um, I think it was. I think it is. Where they actually have a cruise log of where he had gone. They have an actual, I mean, we didn't see that, but we need to go right. and look at it. So it's pretty cool. Um, Piratey places. Where else? Boston. Not Boston, sorry. Uh, Maryland. Maryland. Chesapeake Bay. What about is a where, place. where we went in Georgia there? The, the coastal oh, area there. that? I guess that was, more, that was more of a military fort that, that Savannah. was running Well, there were pirates, pirates in those oh, areas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They weren't kind to the pirates. Right. More were the pirates kind right. to the people. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you going to visit... Okay, this is from the only real Tanyasia Autumn Wolf. Um, the visit... Are you when, when are you going to visit Smoky Mountains in Autumn? My favorite place would love to live in Gat Gatlinburg, Tennessee, but I am but I am from Massachusetts now. Would love Salem though. Blessings to y'all. Okay, so visit the Smoky Mountains in autumn. I have I've driven through there. Um, it is absolutely beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Went through there with my dad year, many 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 years ago. Um, that was a neat trip. Really, really loved it. Even Unfortunately, the Ozarks when we went up to Missouri, right? Right. Okay. That doesn't make it that far. It doesn't make it okay. Um, Beautiful. I'd love to go again. Um, I'd like to make that whole eastern seaboard and check it out as far as uh, travel and and uh, see what what all's out there. We've, I've got some friends up in uh, in those areas that I'd like to go visit in their home areas. And I think autumn and winter would be the best times to go. I'm not a big, I know it doesn't get hot up there, but you know, I like winter wonderlands and I know it gets pretty frigid, but I'd enjoy it. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. Okay. The next is from Rusty Pierce. Liked the New Orleans trip, but when are y'all planning to go back? When is he not planning to go? Because <laughs> I'm trying to go in the next three or four weeks. He's trying to go again. I gotta I'm get like... the rest of my head tattooed. I got this side tattooed. You can't really see it now that your hair is yeah, hair's starting to grow through. Yeah, he's got like a big raven over here. Um, yeah. and, and then, then I'm trying to get the other side. Reshave and get the other side done, and then I'm gonna grow it all back out again. Because I can. I, I don't know when that's gonna happen. But it'll happen, I'm sure, because we uh, we have good friends there that feel like family to us, so we'll probably go back soon, I would imagine. Right. But you're trying to go before we move? Yes, I'm trying. Plan? Once we sell the house and we get things uh, well on its way of being packed, I'd like to be able to take a weekend or two or three days, go up there. I think Jeff's gonna go with me. We're gonna run over there. So I don't have to go. You don't have to go. She's off the hook. What the heck? Because she don't have to be in the heat. I don't have to be in the heat. <laughs> I'm gonna run from the AC to the car to AC in that building somewhere. I, somebody was telling me though that there is a hotel that actually has a carousel bar in it, 
like an actual carousel bar that moves. You ride a horse up and down, you know. I'd be carousel. like, I'd be like this grab, with grab, the drink. You gotta snag it. Snag it. Hope you get the right one. Gotta hook it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Okay, and then uh, from Jeff Brigman, any desire to see the Great Wall of China? Yes, for me. No, for her. Why do you Why do you automatically assume it's a no for me? I don't think you want to go. To China? Mm -hmm. You don't want to do most of the Asian countries. That's because I'm afraid of the food. Let's be honest. <laughs> Flat out, I'm scared of the food. I'm scared of the food because I don't know what the heck I'm going to be eating. I just don't like Plus that. She's, she's allergic to seafood and shellfish. I'm fish. not allergic to seafood. I'm allergic to sh uh, shellfish. So there's a lot of stuff. That and when you can't communicate that very well, you don't know what you're going to eat and what's been mixed in. No. And also, I'm not a fan of crowded places. Stick to the vegetables and the, the rice, and yes. you're okay. Yes, but I really no would like to meat. see you know the architect. No mystery meat. Um, <laughs> I really would like to see the um, architecture and um, some of the places. I would love to go to Tibet. I know that's not part of the Great Wall of China, but I, I would like to see the Great Wall. My biggest worry about the Great, the, Wall movie. Of, the Great Wall of China is that's a lot of walking. And a one-legged guy doing that much walking isn't gonna last for You could long. be like Tomb Raider. You know how she takes the the motorcycle and goes along or uh, whatever. If I can get, if I can get, if I can get she, a motorcycle, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Just go vroom, 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 like that. Okay. I'd, I'd, I'd probably need my power chair for Great Wall of China, but I'd love to go. Yeah, be for, but how do you get it up there? The Great ramps. Wall of China? The, it has a ramp. It does. Really? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay, without I know further stairs. ado, I don't know if there's a ramp. that is all of the questions. We took about an hour to answer all of them, so we thank you for your questions, and we're always um, willing to ask uh, to answer any questions that you guys have. But we will be coming on and kind of going over other trips that we've taken. So we have lots of these, and we were going to tell you about each of the boats that we've been on and what we liked and what we didn't like. Where we have um, my friend Heather. You no, you can't. You're not supposed to. Um, my friend Heather, uh, we went on the first cruise with her and her husband Rob, and she has agreed to come on, and we're gonna tell some funny stories about what befell us on our first cruise. Um, I am interviewing each of the kids to tell you their favorite things. Um, so far I have to upload, I think. You want one of these? Episode. Yes. Um, and now we are going to draw for this fancy backpack. So the winner, don't open it yet. Don't open it yet. I'm You're opening open it. it. I'm gonna open it. So we will need to get with you. I think we're gonna give you what, like a week to answer us. Cause I understand that not everybody is on YouTube all the time. I will do my best to reach out to you. Um, and so that we can get your address so that we can send this wonderful thing. But um, let us know if we don't hear from you in a week, then we will draw a second name. Okay. okay? You ready? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I can't see it. They can't see it. You gotta fly it. by night. Fly by night. Fly by night. You are the winner of the travel backpack. Okay, draw another name just in case. If we do not hear from you in a week, fly by well, night. Well, that's just teasing. We'll just draw another one if we don't hear from you. That would just okay. tease them. I'm not going to do it. Tease you I'm gonna We're not going to tease. I'm going to come up with things. All right, fly by night. This is all yours. Woo -woo. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Make sure you hit that bell so you know when we're doing other stuff. Right now, it is the escapades in selling our home. Right. Which is... A lot of work. I'm so, so tired. We're so tired. <laughs> I love you. We're going to make it. Uh -huh. We're going to make it to the Pacific Northwest. Right. Yeah, it's a big deal. Where's the Thank wrong? you. It? We got it over there. Okay, let's, let's go get let's some. Let's change it. Okay, let's go get some more. Love y'all. Bye.